So the sun is sending that this Saturnian energy of Forcus, which can deal with, you know, crazy fucking epiphanies because Forcus is in Pisces, where the sun is. Pisces is like, it's like all the secrets in the world. It's like the spirit world. It's outer space. It's everything going on behind the scenes. Pisces is like the unseen. You know, it's like Scorpio is the doorway to the unseen. And like Pisces is like the full blown off the wall, you know, unseen. So it's like, yeah, we're going to. And, you know, and Virgo is the intellect. So it's like the intellect is getting this powerful energy from, you know, from the darkness of Pisces and being like, look what happened here. <laughs> Deal with it. <clears throat> Greetings, people of the internet. This is Patrick Jugger with the Cosmic Alchemist YouTube channel, and thanks for tuning in. So today I want to talk about the full moon and lunar eclipse on March the 25th, 2024. The maximum is at about 1.30 a.m. I think it's like 1.27 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, so on the eastern coast of the United States. So, yeah, I haven't made a video in a while. I just, I haven't felt compelled. It's like, it's like the whole world's stuck in the mud right now. There's not much going on, but I think this will shake things up a little bit. So, full moon and lunar eclipse. So, FYI, I read primarily sidereal astrology. So, it's not the mainstream astrology that we're accustomed to hearing about. The um, mainstream astrology is what we call tropical. So, it's a theoretical zodiac. It's disconnected from the visible sky. Sidereal astrology, which is what I primarily do, it's visible sky astrology. You look up, the planets are in those constellations at those degrees. So I like that more. You know, one of the reasons that I like it more is because it deals with the subconscious. It deals with the unconscious. You know, tropical astrology, the mainstream system, deals more with your conscious experience. Your conscious experience of your life in the world is very important, but it's not the biggest game in town. Only 10% maximum of our mental activity is conscious. So I like the sidereal zodiac. I like how it's connected to the visible sky. Both zodiacs are perfectly valid. That's just my preference. So if my placement of planets in the signs and degrees sounds wrong, it's very much on purpose. Using a different zodiac. So anyway, let's get into this here. So real quick, what's a full moon? A full moon is an opposition. It's when sun and moon are at opposite places in the zodiac, opposite places in the sky. And during a full moon, the moon, which doesn't, does not create its own light, is not a light source, it is illuminated fully by the sun, which is a light source. So the moon's a reflector, the sun's a light source. And, you know, the, the moon is, it's a projection of our minds, our individual minds and our collective mind. And the mind is not the intellect, but it is the emotional and intuitive consciousness. So it's much bigger than the intellect. And then the sun is a projection of the soul, individually and collectively. So during a full moon, during this opposition, the sun can fully illuminate the moon. And the moon is, it's at its maximum reflectivity. Now, another interesting thing with full moons is that the sun and moon are on opposite sides of the earth. And when the earth basically flies through space, it creates it, it creates a wake in the solar wind. So the solar wind, it's a bunch of radiation that the sun emits. And so the earth has a magnetic shield around it, so it creates a wake. So basically the moon goes around the backside of the earth, and it goes into the wake of the earth. 
And so it bounces this, this solar radiation back at the Earth. So during full moons, the Earth is bombarded with more solar radiation than it is in any other time of the month. So this just kind of puts us on edge, makes us more emotional, makes us more alert. You know, people can go kind of crazy. You know, if you speak to police officers, firemen, people who work in the emergency room, there's more violence, there's more accidents, people drink more, they do more drugs, and um, it's because they're hyper-emotional. So, you know, during a full moon, we really, it's when nature challenges us to face our feelings. And um, we try not to do this. We eat things, drink things, smoke things, snort things, so we don't have to do that. You know, and if you have any experience as a drinker, <laughs> you'll remember that um, during a full moon, you have a higher alcohol tolerance. And it's even the same for drugs. This is because nature is trying to get you to face your feelings. But you, the personality, are like rebelling against that. So your willpower will basically will fight against that. And, um, you know, your body's basically giving you more tolerance so you can't reach numbness or oblivion as quickly as you usually do. You need a higher dose. So, yeah, I'm sure people can relate to, <laughs> to drinking on a full moon at some point. Um, so, yeah, that's the deal with that. So then lunar eclipses happen. They coincide with full moons. So a lunar eclipse is when the moon in the sky is brought into shadow. It's darkened. So eclipses are, they're real aha moments because the light of the sun or the moon is darkened. And, you know, it's like when life is very busy and you're overwhelmed and you, know, you have a, a lot of problems to deal with. You know, what you'll do is you won't, Sometimes you don't know how you feel. You don't know what you think about something. And you need to take a break so that you can just know how you feel. So eclipses are like that. So we're usually, we get this light from the sun and the moon and it's very intense. And then all of a sudden it's darkened and we suddenly become aware of our emotions in a different way than we usually are. They get more intense. Again, people can go a little crazy. So that's that's the general idea with that. Now let's look at the placement. So the full moon is at 10 degrees sidereal Virgo. Virgo is the sign of health, healing, disease, medicines, poisons, uh, the healthcare system, healthcare workers, the public health, you know, bureaucratic institution. It's, um, and then for America, it's the 10th house of government. And Virgo just also deals with like the fights, the things we fight for, the conflicts in our lives. So, and you know, the thankless jobs that have to be done. But, you know, for this, I'm emphasizing, you know, the health, healing, disease, poisons, medicines. So, <clears throat> we've got that going on. Now, this full moon is conjunct a fixed star called Zania or Zania. I'm not sure what the correct one is. Zania is called the hottest star. So when we're talking about heat here, we're talking about passion, we're talking about emotion. It's a star of sexuality, attractiveness. It deals with cheating, adultery, overpowering desire. It can even deal with prostitution. So just in the realm of Virgo, health, healing, disease, poisons, medicines, health care, and a lot of prostitution, you know, especially the government prostituting itself to drug companies by making these, these, bogle, these bogus illegal you know, requirements for the uh, prickly pear Jabberwocky needlecraft. So yeah, yeah, government, you know, go government prostitutes itself on a good day. But over the past four years with the scamdemic, went through the roof. So that'll be interesting. Um, 
And then two, the um, the lunar mansion that the moon is in. It's a, it's a moon ruled lunar mansion called Sol S O L. So it's the sun god. You know, Sol was the Titan, which was the um, the physical presence of the sun. So, Sol, the lunar mansion, the symbol looks like a hand, you know, it's like this circle with these five fingers coming off it. So, it's like the sun rays, you know, the, the rays of the sun kind of look like a hand. So, it deals with skill and work of the hands. So, we're talking like healing, art, craftsmanship, all that kind of stuff. And it's like, how many images, how many thousands of images have we seen in the past four years of hands? injecting prickly pear into people's bodies so this could bring this up um a couple of possibilities you know it's like it could be sort of scandemic 2.0 i don't think a lockdown would would work but as people as more and more people succumb to um side effects of the, the prickly pear the needle craft then they might say, oh, it's, it's a new wave. It's a new wave of, scan, of scandemic, of black plague. Um, especially as all these illegal immigrants that are being brought into the United States are, you know, being injected. It's like, well, side effects are going to catch up with them, too. Um, they're going to pay dearly for that $2,000 a month debit card plus the free housing that they're getting from the federal government, you know, they're going to have to pay. They, they may get sent into a, like into the meat grinder, you know, when whichever war eventually starts, hopefully not here in the United States. Um, they may have to pay dearly for those government benefits, but anyway, so that's a possibility. The other possibility too is, um, something I learned about from, uh, the astrologer, David Palmer, AKA Leo King. And he pointed out that in 1788, there was a doctor's riot. And basically, doctors in New York City were seized and, in some cases, killed by mobs. Because what they were doing in New York City, they were going to cemeteries, they were digging up corpses without the permission of the families so that they could dissect them. And some of the family members went absolutely crazy about this, justifiably. So... Some the 1788 and 2024 both the years have something very important in common. What they have in common was that the two eclipses in both years create an X over Texas. So the eclipse of October 2023, the the path of the eclipse of its visibility, ran down the southwestern border. The United States, you know, so from California through Arizona, New Mexico, and through Texas. The April 8th solar eclipse of 2024 will go from Texas and it'll go northeast up to Maine and eastern Canada. So they form an X over Texas. So 1788, you had two eclipses that had the same pattern of visibility. And, you know, another interesting thing about 1788, it was, the, it was the beginning of the constituted United States of America. So this is when the Constitutional Convention was rolling. So the, these, these patterns of eclipse visibility are bookmarks. So 1788 was the beginning of the constituted United States, and 2024 is the end. So it doesn't mean we're going to be taken over by China and all this blah, 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 you know, uh, truth or paranoid fantasies. It just means the United States of America is going to go on to be something different than what it has been. So pretty interesting. But I think this, this full moon lunar eclipse is pointing out our denial around the public health, the healthcare system, the medicines that were dispensed in the last four years, you know, this prickly pear needle craft jabberwocky so yeah you know that's the thing too with eclipses is it's like they point out where we've been in denial and so you know this is a k2 eclipse so it kind of deals with like the losses that have happened from you know public health and the healthcare system but it also deals with kind of like moving past the whole thing too 
So, but yeah, eclipses just generally deal with denial. And usually in life, unexpected things happen to us because we were in denial or we were just oblivious. We kept getting warning signs that something was going to happen, but we just weren't paying attention. And all of a sudden, wow, how did that happen? Something happens to us. We had warning signs, but we were not paying attention. So, you know, it's possible something new may come out. There might, there might be another doctor's, you know, there might be doctor's riots around the world where people are like, they're just, they find out how dangerous, you know, the Jabberwocky was. And they say, and they might take it out on their doctor and say, why the fuck would you inject me with that? So we'll see what happens. Um, the other thing too, the lunar mansion that the sun is in at the time of this full moon lunar eclipse is called Forcus. Forcus is the, um, this is a Titan who was, he was the father of the Gorgons, so Medusa and her sisters. Um, he, you know, he was, he was a ruler of the depths of the ocean, which means that He's like one of the rulers of our deep, unconscious emotions, which, you know, usually make us very uncomfortable and freak us out if we actually have to feel them and face them. You know, and all about this. I'm not just, I'm not just making fun of people. So Forcus is this, this, this force, this powerful, unconscious mind, emotional force. And Forcus is ruled by Saturn. So Saturn is all about accountability and responsibility, about following natural law, following spiritual law. So the sun is sending that, this Saturnian energy of Forcus, which can deal with, you know, crazy fucking epiphanies because Forcus is in Pisces, where the sun is. Pisces is like, it's like all the secrets in the world. It's like the spirit world. It's outer space. It's everything going on behind the scenes. Pisces is like the unseen. You know, it's like Scorpio is the doorway to the unseen. And like Pisces is like the full blown off the wall, you know, unseen. So it's like, yeah, we're going to, and you know, and Virgo is the intellect. So it's like the intellect is getting this powerful energy from, you know, from the darkness of Pisces and being like, look what happened here. <laughs> Deal with it. So, in the symbol for Forcus, for this lunar mansion Forcus, which is in Pisces, which is where the sun is during the full moon and lunar eclipse, it's what the Old Testament calls the brazen serpent. Brazen serpent. So, you know, a biblical literalist would tell you, oh, this brazen serpent, it was Moses, you know what the fuck he did? He had like a towel cross and his, I don't know if he threw his staff at it and turned into a serpent or, I don't know. But people will tell you it's like, it's just this thing that only happened in the times of the Old Testament. Well, the brazen serpent is just a variation on the caduceus, which is a symbol of the planet Mercury. It deals with the ener the kundalini energy moving up the spine, the serpentine kundalini energy, which is our kundalini is the it's the energy of your personality. It's the energy of emotional maturity. So it's like basically how high your kundalini is. It's a it's symbolic of where is your consciousness? How mature are you? But this caduceus, this brazen serpent, is also a symbol for medical arts, for healing arts, for medical practitioners. So it's like it's like a spotlight on the medical practitioners and the public health institution and the drug companies and the hospitals. So we got some pretty powerful stuff here. Um Now, the other thing, too, since this is a Saturn, so is this Forcus where the sun is during this full moon and lunar eclipse, since the sun is in Forcus and it's Saturn rule, I want to take a look at Saturn. What's Saturn up to? 
Saturn is in Aquarius. It's in a home sign. It's extremely strong. You know, Aquarius, it's the soft. So Saturn has two signs that rules, Capricorn and Aquarius. Aquarius is the more yin. It's the softer side of Saturn. It gives gifts. But it's also all about accountability and responsibility. And Saturn is extremely strong there. So Saturn, at the time of this lunar uh, lunar eclipse and full moon, it's in it's in Aquarius. It's in its home sign. It's in a lunar mansion called Egion. You know, the uh, Shatabisha is the Vedic name. So it's in Egion. And it's in, let me see who rules Egyon. I can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, shit, I went too far. Egyon is ruled by its lord is Rahu. That's right. So, what is Egyon? Egyon is the, um, the abode of King Neptune or Poseidon, the ruler of the ocean and the depths of the ocean. So we have two lunar mansions here that deal with either the palace of the ruler of the ocean or, you know, the the older Titanic rule of the a ruler of the ocean who came before Neptune, aka Poseidon, you know, Forcus. So. Yes, Saturn is in this lunar mansion of Egeon. Egeon deals with, you know, when you look at the uh, the symbol is really interesting. It's um, it's basically like like a model of like an atom, and it deals with electromagnetic force, and it also deals with like realizations that come out of the depths of the unconscious emotions. So it deals with facing un very uncomfortable unconscious emotions. And, you know, th this Egeon, a.k.a. Shatabisha, Lunar Mansion, it's the mansion of the 100 healers. So the healers to the gods. So it strongly deals with healers here. So Saturn, it's like, okay, we're going to have some accountability around what the public health establishment has been up to. Now, within two degrees, wait. Excuse me, that's later on. Within, so Mars is approaching Saturn. And it won't be until April where they can jump. But, so at this time, during his um, full moon lunar eclipse, Saturn's at 18 Aquarius. Mars is at 7 Aquarius. So it's 11 degrees away. They're not conjunct. They're in the same, they're, they're in the same house, like they're roommates. But they're sharing a big house. So they, they're aware of each other's presence, but they're not strongly influencing each other yet. But they're both within the same lunar mansion. Egeon, a.k.a. Shadabisha, the lunar mansion of the 100 healers to the gods. So Mars is going to contribute a little outrage to this realization about what public health has been up to. It's pretty interesting. And on top of that, this Mars, which is in the same lunar mansion as Saturn in Aquarius, it's pro it's projecting its eighth aspect onto the full moon or eclipsed full moon. So, you know, in the eighth aspect, it's just kind of out of control because it's 210 degrees away. It's 30 degrees past the 180 degree opposition point. So when planets are 210 degrees or 150 degrees away from each other, they can't get in sync and they can't communicate clearly. So it creates like frustration and anger and, you know, just like drama. So, yeah, maybe a doctor's riot, maybe doctor's riots all around the world. I don't know. But pretty interesting. But yeah, um, you know, and then the other thing, too, that I wanted to point out here is um, Neptune. Now, Neptune, so this, um, 
this Aegean where Saturn is, this lunar mansion. The Lord is Rahu, but the ruler is the god Neptune. So if we look at the planet Neptune, Neptune is at home in Pisces, at three degrees Pisces. The, it's, it's kind of, it's on the cusp between two lunar mansions. It's between Chimera and Forcus, who we spoke about. So Forcus is, you know, it's like these deep, um, it's like deep intuition and these deep realizations. And then Chimera, Chimera can be a little bit of a busybody because it wants to make a difference in the world. And it can deal with people like sacrificing themselves, um, you know, to be like altruistic, basically. <clears throat> so... It's like Neptune can bring us like the biggest like divine revelations because Neptune deals with, with divine universal love. It's, it's higher octave than Venus. Now, if our consciousness is in the right place, this divine universal love gives us an extremely broad perspective and we can... It's like it brings us enlightenment. We can see things for what they are, which is what enlightenment is. Now, if we're selfless, and I think selflessness is, can be a very ugly thing. If we're selfless and we're just in a collectivist mentality and we're like, oh, my individuality doesn't matter. All that matters is what's good for the collective. The, the needs of the many are greater than the one. You know, which is what people were saying at the beginning of the span scamdemic, all of these like new agey spiritual, you know, shaman types. Not all of them, but a lot of them were saying that. They were like, Oh, we need to follow the lockdowns. Oh, whenever they come up with 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 the jabberwocky, we're gonna have to get injected with it because the needs of the many outweigh those of the few. Well, Chimera, you know, the planet Neptune, excuse me. If we're in this collectivist mentality, it can get us to sacrifice ourselves. You know, it's like, so Neptune is at home in Pisces. Pisces is the, Christianity is the, the religion of the age of Pisces. So when people are like in this collectivist mentality and they have no sense of self, they throw themselves under the bus for their rulers. So, yeah, Neptune being there, this is like another temptation. Or it's a revelation, depending on how you meet it. So you're either going to get a revelation about what's been going on in the last four years, or you're going to get, oh, oh, I have to sacrifice myself. I could kill grandma. I'm not a grandma killer. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with this. So, yeah, but, you know, I think, you know, so Neptune being at this cusp of Chimera and Forcus, it can say, hey, you want to sacrifice yourself for the needs of many, for the needs of the collective, or it could be nonconformist and it can be like, okay, you're going to have to rebel here in order to follow spiritual law and natural law because your figures of authority are clearly not. So there's that. And then the last detail I'll bring into this, we are going to have a Gandanta Mercury that's, I think April 1st is when it retrogrades. So it's, it's what's the degree here? Where are you, Mercury? Yeah. Mercury's going to go, I think, just a little ways into Aries, and then it's going to going to come back. Yeah, so, so yeah, Mercury's slowing down here. It's getting ready to station and go retrograde. So, during this full moon lunar eclipse, uh, Mercury is Gandanta. It's at 29 degrees Pisces. Gandanta, it deals with like a, um, a karmic knot. It's when 
planets transition from a water sign to a fire sign. So Pisces is a water sign. The next sign, Aries, is a fire sign. So this cusp where the water and fire meet, basically the water boils. It turns to steam. It gets very intense. And Mercury is the intellect. So this can be a time when a lot of people have trouble thinking clearly because their intellect goes very emotional. You know, in Pisces, the water sign, the deepest water sign, extremely emotional. And Pisces is the debilitation of Mercury, where Mercury, Mercury, I would, some people say a debilitation of a planet is weakest. I think it's just the most unfamiliar. It's, it's, the planet's like out of, out of its element. So it has to work harder, but it can get amazing things done. So this will be a time when we can really like, our intellect can really gaze into the, the darkness of Pisces, the unseen worlds, and really understand some deep truths. Or we can just sort of go crazy because we're not ready to, to face the darkness. But, you know, to be an adult, you have to be ready to face the darkness. We have to be ready to steward children and, and you know, help them face it and teach them how to face it. So, you know, it's our duty here. And then, you know, the other thing, too, with Mercury, Mercury is the moon's dispositor through this lunar eclipse full moon. So a dispositor is the ruler of a sign where like a conjunction or a full moon or, or an eclipse happens. So during the, the full moon lunar eclipse, the moon's in sidereal Virgo. Virgo is ruled by Mercury. So Mercury is the moon's dispositor. So the condition of the dispositor, of the ruler of the sign, has a lot to do with the, the energy, with the mood of the event. So the mood, the energy of this full moon lunar eclipse, it, it has potential for deep realization or for deep panic because Mercury, the intellect, is going to feel like it's drowning in the final degree of Pisces. So, all right, 30 minutes, not bad. I'm going to keep it at that. hope you got something out of this, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Have a nice one.